Hello everyone, just a quick video on the multifactorial fatigue mechanisms which are obviously detrimental to athlete and performance um, of that particular athlete. Now they pretty much come into three categories. There's fuel depletion, there's metabolic byproducts and there's the, uh, the effects of thermoregulation. Now um, fuel depletion is commonly associated with um, phosphocreatine and obviously we only have a limited supply of it a uh, limited supply of ATP and obviously when that is uh, utilized then uh, we have a detriment or a drop in our performance uh, which is a which is associated with fatigue so as we use up all our PC stores then there's therefore uh, not as much chance for us to do high intensity activity um, without sort of building up those metabolic byproducts also you look at fuel depletion as um, you know as happening with carbohydrates and glycogen uh, glucose as we use those um, those sources of, of of those food fuel sources, um, we tend to have a really serious um, drop in you know drop in performance uh, as we enter fatigue. So in prolonged events where we start to utilise all of our glyco glucose and glycogen, uh, we might become hypoglycemic, and that has severe consequences in terms of concentration and um, and our ability to actually make our muscles contract. Now remember when we talk about fatigue, it is it's that ability for our muscles um, to contract and obviously the more fatigued we are um, the less forceful the less speedy our muscles are um, able to respond to stimulus that we present them with other than fuel depletion there's the build-up of metabolic byproducts now metabolic byproducts come as a result of uh, energy production and through movement and one of the characteristics of um, and working in an anaerobic system is the fact there's no oxygen and when there's no oxygen uh, we break down pyruvic acid and the byproduct of that is lactic acid which in um, also as a result of lactic acid there is hydrogen ions and, and the hydrogen ions actually make the muscle more acidic like these people here they might be feeling really um, acidic muscles and and that's sort of the feeling we used to get uh, it's like the burn that you feel in your muscles uh, when you've been exercising at high intensity for long periods those build up of hydrogen ions actually make it really difficult for the muscle to contract and, and therefore really um, linked with uh, fatigue. Another metabolic byproduct is the, the build up of an inorganic phosphate. And as we know, we break adenosine triphosphate off, it becomes adenosine diphosphate. When we break um, phosphocreatine, we get this inorganic phosphate molecule, which we then attach back to. ADP. Now, that inorganic phosphate on its own is actually a little bit detrimental to the um, cytoplasm in a cell, which makes it really difficult to contract. So, another way that we fatigue is via the buildup of inorganic phosphates. And finally, the last sort of fatigue mechanism we can look at is um, the effects of thermoregulation. Now, the body likes to stay at a constant temperature. If we work above or below that temperature, we start to see a drop in our performance. Um, you know, to the point of obviously we start to dehydrate because if we go above normal temperature range we start to sweat um, we sweat a lot and we're not topping up our body with water then we start to actually really deteriorate you know you lose about two percent of your your um, body mass in water and you see a you know a, a fair drop in um, your performance continually lose more um, more and more body mass in terms of water and you can actually get to the point where um, you can actually end up in a coma and die and you become really confused and certainly isn't something that um, athletes want to go through. So fuel depletion and the, you know, the, the depletion of PC stores and glycogen, major fatigue mechanism. We look at the buildup of metabolic byproducts uh, and hydrogen ions and the inorganic phosphate. And finally, you look at the effects of thermoregulation, so the body becoming too hot or too cold. Uh, and how that affects our ability to continually perform. And obviously, um, all of these things are uh, detrimental to performance, and athletes try and extend um, the point at which this fatigue occurs, and that's part of the reason why training is really, really good for that.